This topic is virtual faster better, how to deploy HGL nodes 1101 FP2 for Citrix and VDI. Um, my name is Christoph Adler. I'm a senior consultant with Pen Agenda. Um, now I'm working more than 19 years with the Lotus IBM and HGL digital solutions uh, products. And um, yeah, I'm very focused on the nodes client management, including HGL Nomad and HGL Nomad Web in the future, and the analysis and optimization in general of nodes and domino infrastructures. A bit of client modernization, a bit of cloud migrations. And as I you know, previously gave you that information, I think you can hear that I'm a German and um, like to play bass music, uh, like to play the bass guitar. Um, I'm a geek, so I like to play with um, IT stuff and uh, IT stuff. Um, I like music, football, and beer. I'm an HDL ambassador of 2020, and now I'm happy to share some information with you. First of all, um, you can download my slides at SlideShare. You can just um, make a picture of the QR code, or you go to this um, to this URL, um, to this address, and then um, can see all those slides are, uh, are already online. And um, <clears throat> those slides will also be published on the Russian Notes user group website by this awesome team. Okay, so let's see what we have today on the agenda. We want to talk about how we can deploy the Notes client on Citrix and VDI. So we first need a little introduction. Then we talk about a very important topic, roaming. Then we talk about the Notes um, 1101 FP2 installation, and then I do have a live demo for you um, where I want to show you how useful it is to have what we call the workspace improvement in place on your clients. At the end, we will have a, a question and answers section where you can ask questions. So you can ask questions right now in the chat, in the Telegram chat, and um, those questions will be collected by... Um, Margarita and Flat, and um, so they can ask me the questions um, after the session. Let's start with the introduction. So what are virtual environments? Um, I try to give you my understanding from the virtual environment is, first of all, we could have a VDI, which is a virtual desktop infrastructure, could be VMware Horizon, could be Citrix, then desktop, right? And there's a terminal services or terminal server solution, which is Citrix Zen app, right? Those two products, and I'm pretty sure there are also other VDI products in place. This is what I mean with, um, with a virtual environment, right? So we do not talk about um, laptops or desktops right now. We talk about virtual clients. What do I see typically out there at customers is um, what we see is, Aged nodes installations means if the users are or customers are using virtual environments um, that are working somehow, right? Mostly the data folders are on network drives or network shares, and um, that causes um, a lot of things like nodes needs a long time to start. Um, I see it for customers that there are a lot of crashes or uh, what we call hangs or wait times. Yeah? And this is due to, it could be latency, it could be network, could be the file service itself. What we also see there is that um, customers are having a lot of high network traffic um, constantly between the nodes client and the data folder. Since in a virtual environment, if you have the data folder on a network share, what you have is you have to transfer the data all the time between the nodes client and the data folder on a network share. So that will uh, create latencies that will, you know, means a lot of um, or high demand on network traffic, and that can cause problems. What we also see is frequently that um, local databases, which are not local any longer, but on the network drive are um, corrupted. So, what you also have is you have a permanently occupied disk space on the file server, on the SAN, on the NAS. And we talk about with a data folder of nodes, at least with 
uh, 20 megabytes, sorry. So 120 megabytes for data folder. Um, that is, I would say this is not, this is under average, right? This is just the minimum of what users will have. And this is often because of old and outdated files, even templates, bigger desktop files, bigger bookmark files, cache NDK, and so on and so on. So what I typically do, or what we typically do is, um, we try to spark the, um, the enthusiasm for, for nodes um, of our customers. Means especially in virtual environments, you can optimize HDL nodes in a way that it really gives you a good speed and a good stability. And you know, it's just, it's just good for people. And it's just easy for administrators because you only have to have to um, maintain if you do an image based one image or two or three images, which is very easy if you compare that to um, distributed laptops and, and desktops, right? So yes, they can be very cool. The result can be very good for customers, but we need to change something here, right? Maybe. So um, also what we try is we, um, we try to uh, encourage uh, administrators to spend a little more time on troubleshooting and analyzing the stuff um, instead of, yeah, okay, say instead of just um, um, just ignore problems. And I don't mean it badly because I also work in support. So I know how, um, how difficult it could be if you have tons of tickets, right? Um, but still, it makes sense that you um, use or that you solve root causes and not symptoms because otherwise you fight against symptoms all the time it's like headache, right? Um, if you um, if you have a headache, um, the best solution would be first to drink a liter of water to just try to get um, hydrated and get rid of the headache, right? So um, solving the root cause. If you take a pill, it's working, but you're not, you know, this the headache will come back uh, if you're not drinking water. And this is at the same way, right? Okay, so let's quickly jump into the roaming topic and i tell you why because i want to just ask you to to rethink the way of maybe you are using nodes on in virtual infrastructures so i would ask you to think about what about using nodes with the data folder in the local app data instead of a different on a different machine on a different file server so um, it would be better for for the nodes kind it would be better to um to use it on, on the local disk uh, because you would not have so many files in the network. Um, so it would, be, it would be easier. But now if I do that, if I say using the data folder locally on the virtual image, that means everybody would say something like, oh no, then we have you know, all the data folders of all users in our images. That's not the case. I'm talking about a solution. I wanna show you in a couple of seconds which can make your life and the life of your users much easier and they will give you back performance and stability. So um, we can ensure that um, the disk space by the, the users will be cleared automatically, all that stuff, um, right? So how can we avoid it? So think about, we have a data folder now in our local app data, means on the local disk. Um, of the of the virtual um, desktop infrastructure image or of the Citrix server. Um, so how can we avoid transfers of large data folders during log on or log off, which can also increase wait times and cause also network traffic, right? Um, the answer is roaming. Roaming means um, we provide the end users with their very latest nodes configuration. Their data needs to be roamed um, onto a server uh, when they lock on, right? So that means what we need is we need kind of a roaming set. And the roaming set is just a subset of the data folder. I can tell you, and this is the only commercial break I will do here. Um, there are solutions in the market which can bring down in um, a data folder which has a size of 300, 400 megabytes down to 500 kilobytes, right? So think about a roaming set is on the network share instead of the data folder, just the small 500 kilobytes instead of 120 megabytes. And when you start nodes in a, on a virtual client, you're just reading the 500 kilobytes 
to get back everything for the user. And that is possible. So um, let's see how that could work, right? The user is logging on to the virtual session. This could be a VI server client, could be, um, could be a Citrix, means a terminal service, uh, terminal server client. When the user is logging on, that would be a moment where um, roaming can happen, right? So you can use it using a logon script, you can use third party solutions to get um, the parts of the data folder or this, the exact same data folder back for the user. Then afterwards, if you are logged on, you start HTL nodes. And that moment, there's another moment where a solution can, can bring the data back. For instance, Marvel Client Roaming um, is working here. So if you start nodes, Marvel Client will automatically kick in and bring you the roaming set back, means 500K transfer from the, um, from the network drive to your, to your VDI client or your Citrix server. Typically, you have to log on nodes, either with a password or you are using SAML or in single sign-on method. After logging on, um, you could work with nodes. What's in between is, is you can also use domino roaming. I have to be honest, again, um, domino roaming is not very famous any longer. For a couple of years, um, we, do, uh, we do not have um, a lot of customers which are using roaming. Typically, I get companies who are asking me, how can we get rid of domino roaming? Because there's a lot of, it was designed for, um, for the basic client. So that means a lot of stuff from the, um, from, the, from the Eclipse client, from the full client, and also from the notes I and I will simply not work. So it's not real roaming. It just gives you your workspace back um, and some other stuff, but it's not like a real 100% solution, right? And it is huge, right? So because you have, everything will be stored in the bookmark database, which will be replicated on the Domino server. So at least it's, think about 80 megabytes for a use, for a normal user, that's pretty normal. It's 80 megabytes when you start the notes client bef before you can work with it. So it's, that's my personal opinion. I wouldn't use it any longer, but it, you know, but it's an option and it's in the platform and it's available for, for free, right? So then you can work with notes. The whole day you can work eight hours with notes. And in the moment when you work with notes, you don't need to, access files on the file share because you work locally on the machine, right? When you shut down nodes, this is the best moment where you can you know, write the roaming set or update the roaming set. For instance, Domino Roaming will be doing it um, at this point. Marvel Client would, um, would do it um, at this point because when you shut down nodes, we can collect all the stuff, what the user changed during the day and can write it into the roaming set, right? And then afterwards you log off from the virtual session where if you want to do it here with again log off scripts or other third party solutions you can also do it here right that is how um, nodes works in a virtual environment with a roaming solution which is if you ask me the best thing what you could do and afterwards you can clear out the data and this is pretty much important is we don't need the data folder on the virtual servers. We don't need it. We don't need persistent data folders. What we need is we need the data from the data folder only when nodes is being used, not before and not after. That's the reason why roaming is the best solution for virtual infrastructures. Let's talk about the best possible installation on 11, uh, for 11.01 FP2 on virtual infrastructures. I now talk like more than three times, I think, about this one here. So please use default path because it just makes sense. So if you want to use 1101, use the HEL instead of IBM, right? And um, multi-user install only, please. And this is the only supported version on for, uh, for terminal services, for Citrix servers. Um, and please always use the parameter Citrix equals one if you install the notes client. We are talking about the command lines in a couple of minutes. 
So at least if terminal servers are involved, use Citrix equals one, but it also will work for all other VDI installations. And again, I think I already told you this morning or two hours ago that we that there's no need to make any changes to MSI packages. Scripts can help here very easily or even products, right? I think I already mentioned it um, in my workshop last week that uh, Marvel Clan Upgrade provides a, um, a, 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 let's say, functionality to create a notes client package for Citrix and VDI automatically, um, just with a single or with a couple of clicks in minutes. And then you always have the latest yeah, installation package. Let's talk about the command lines. We need to have an uninstall first. So um, we need to get um, get nodes removed first. That's pretty important. So um, use the nice solution, means the nice the nodes install, clean up executable to get rid of the nodes client, um, and then just remove everything you have here for the old installation. Um, that because if we start on a virtual infrastructure, we really want to start from scratch. We want to have new components and not old files. Then we come to the installation, right? In this moment, it, it's the same thing I taught like two hours ago. We want to install Notes Client 1101. We want to add the Russian language and we want to install Pixpack 2. So um, you can use those parameters here, those command lines um, to be um, to execute in your scripts to get the best um, solution here for Citrix and VDI. Again, don't forget to put the Citrix equals one parameters into all of the packages. Then we need to talk about ODS briefly. I did that um, this um, Tuesday. I think that was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, uh, a bit more intense with the um, uh, with the performance, with my performance um, slides and session. Um, ODS is a strong factor on performance for virtual, for notes clients in general, and also on virtual infrastructures. Because with ODS, we can reduce file IO. And um, if you install nodes 11, you need to have ODS 53 in place, full stop. It just, it just gives you a lot of benefits. The differences between ODS 43, which used to be the standard, and 53 is up to 80% less file IO. So think about you have 100 users or even 1,000 users or even more on a virtual infrastructure, and you can save up to 80% less file IO caused by nodes. That's a lot. So you will get back performance, not only for nodes, but also for other programs or applications you want to use in your virtual infrastructure. You can follow those steps here. I don't go through all those steps right now deeply, but you can follow those steps here to get to, um, first of all, enable the, um, the latest ODS for the users and also, which is very important for the templates because the templates will be used at every single client start. And if we have new uh, ODS on templates, this will simply help. So um, you can run, so first of all, you need to have this create R10 databases equals one nodes I and I entry in place, and then you can um, execute this, um, uh, this command line, right? Okay, there was ODS. And uh, next thing would be notes I and I. The notes I and I is so important and uh, for, for not only for performance and stability, but also for settings, right? So I would say a properly configured shared notes I and I is absolutely essential for a good running, a perfect running notes environment. So, um, let me quickly um, tell you where the notes client is. So um, uh, where the notes, the notes I and I lives. The notes I and I lives in the data folder, of course, but the stub notes I and I, so the shared notes I and I lives in C program data, HGL notes data. So this will be used by, if you have a roaming solution and this file will be used during every client start. So um, this is used as like a template notes I and I. And um, yeah, I, I would just want to give you a couple of good notes I and I 
um, entries for Citrix and BDI. So we start with ports. Yes, we need ports in place. So ports equals TCP IP needs to be in place. And um, the next one um, is how TCP IP is configured. And what you see here is the, the, um, the value means everything after the equal sign here just describes TCP IP port is enabled. Non-compression, non-encryption, so nothing. And the reason is why, because the virtual client is in the middle of your infrastructure and it's in a secure environment typically, you don't need encryption then from, from the virtual client to the Domino server and you do not need compression. Why do not need compression? Compression sounds like it's always good. Yes, but not in, in on computers or on servers where multiple users work on because compression will add about 5% CPU overhead. So think about you have 60 sessions on your, on your server, just 60 users using nodes. You would need at least three dedicated CPUs just for compression. So that means we don't need compression. We just need a properly configured TCP IP port. And this is the best way to do that. The next one is disabled client record. So this entry will, um, will, re will disable the logging of the client information into the, your personal um, um, person document because it doesn't make sense. So if you work in a virtual environment, your server can be changed uh, during every single client start. Right? We don't need that information in the person document. And if you're using at least the free variant or the free uh, version of Marble Client, means Marble Client Essentials, you will have all that, all that stuff in the Analyze database. So you can disable client record, which will just speed up your node's client start a bit. The next one is, and we already talked about that, is ODS, right? The, um, the, this parameter here, is, um, where's my mouse? Yeah, create R10 databases. This is just needed, right? Because we need the latest ODS. The next one is lock. Um, this looks a bit weird because typically it um, there's one, one um, whole, a file name missing, the lock.nsf. So if you have the parameter lock equals this one here, it just means a lock.nsf file will not be created on that client. And this is good because on Citrix, we don't need it. If the data folder just get an age of maximum eight hours or 10 hours, because then you, you shut off and then you, um, uh, you, you write your roaming setback, you don't need it any longer, right? So um, you don't need a lock file. This will just cause file IO. You can just, you know, you don't need it. And um, the, next, uh, the next one is the config file. The config file is able to pre-configure your nodes clients in a, per, in a nearly perfect way for new users. So yes, use it. And I will go through the config file itself on the next slides. So this is all parameters for copy and paste. You can just copy them and paste them into your stub notes I and I. Um, additionally to the um, um, to the standard parameters. It's very important, please additionally, because the standard default parameters we need, right? And there's one other thing. Please always keep a blank line at the bottom of the notes I and I file. And the reason is because um, if you don't have a last, if the last line is not a blank line, the last line will be ignored, right? And typically we need all the settings. So just keep a blank line and then you're you're on the safe side. Let's quickly talk about the config file. I already talked about that. Here's also a link. So you can create a config file for new users so that nodes will be completely automated, um, automatic be configured by nodes itself. And what you see here is it's just a couple of things what you, um, what you should uh, put into the config file. First of all, the username, the username you can typically use like percentage username percentage or the email address of the user. And then if you use ID vault in Domino, which is the best thing what you can do is the um, config file will send this username to the Domino server. You have to type in your, or um, put your Domino server name in, maybe also additionally the, um, um, the host name of your Domino server. 
And that will send to your Domino server. Uh, so um, the notes client will send the username to your Domino server. The Domino server will identify, I have an entry in my ID vault for that user, will provide the ID back and will do the complete configuration. And you see additional services equals minus one just means um, the default settings of the notes client will be, will be used. That's it. And that, that easy it can work for new users without um, pre-configuring the notes client uh, manually. Now we have to talk about the share classes improvement. So this, all the text here, I will not go through all the text. This um, is if you want to do that in your very own environment at home or in your company. Um, so, but let me describe it a bit. In every single data folder, we have a single file um, and that's called the XPD plat, the XPData platform file, which has a size of, it's a fixed size of 64 megabytes. Now, th since this is in the data folder, this can cause a lot of file IO when a user logs into a Citrix or VDI system because a 64 megabytes file gets created. Now this file, and this is the trick, this file can be used for, um, from all users on the same machine at the same time. So what we need to do is we need to get this file out of the data folder and putting it into the shared data folder, right? And this is what you, how you can do that. You just go into the, um, where is it? The, um, where do I have the file? Oh, yeah, here you, you see that, sorry. The program files, um, HCL notes, framework, and then so on. It's a JVM properties file, right? You can set in the JVM properties file, can, you can set a new location for this file. And then it will be used somewhere else. So we can save at least 64 megabyte in every single data folder. That's a lot. Multiply this with the amount of users you have in your environment, and then you can understand how much on disk capacity and storage you can save just with this improvement, right? And again, I will show you the result in a couple of minutes in my live demo. The next one, thing, uh, the next thing is the JVM properties file. Um, I already talked about that, and in my slides, you will see a couple of more slides here. So I filtered out about five slides here today, um, where I describe the what we call out of memory mystery in notes. Um, it's very important if you use notes 1101 without fixed pack or with fixed pack one or n2, um, you have to set XMX 512 or 768 instead of um, 1024. That's very much important. And um, I describe it on the slides, right? And also one other very important thing is we need to remove the single JVM entry from the vmarch dshare parameter, right? In that case, we ensure that if uh, there are many users on the machine, they will share the JVM instance. So not every user will get a single JVM, but there's one JVM loaded and every user can use it. It will just save time and power from your systems and make it faster and more reliable for users. And now we're coming to you know the very very um, famous um, what we call workspace improvement. So we first need to understand um, what it is. Um, we are all aware about the workspace folder. Pretty sure. If I would ask you right now, whoever deleted the workspace folder because of problems, because of long client startup times, because of hangs or crashes, I would say everybody would say. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Um, and so, so that's, that's really the case. Um, the workspace folder itself is, um, is important for the notes installation, right? And um, you don't need to, to read that, all that stuff. It's really, it's, it's something what you can use at home. And that's the reason why I called, uh, I, why I created um, those slides as a recipe for a good installation. So um, something between, 64 and 75 percent of the notes client start is used by the um, 
the workspace improvement or the, the workspace folder, sorry, by checking the workspace folder, building up the workspace folder at least 13 seconds. It's always needed to for the workspace folder. And it could it, it, in notes client studies, in average, we have 20 seconds or even more, right? And there's a lot of stuff in the workspace folder. So at least 20, 200, uh, 220 files, a lot of folders, and it includes at least 85 megabytes or even more. So as I said, when we create the workspace folder, this will cause a lot of file IO. And that's the reason why we can make a little trick here. And I will not go through this through those steps because you can do that at home, but we will just, and in summary, we will prepare a workspace folder um, for all users, which will not contain any user data. So it's kind of the framework of the workspace folder and which can be used by all the users, right? Let me show you that um, live. And by the way, before I do that, if you do the workspace improvement, you need to um, do that all the time when you install a new version. So you have to repeat the workspace improvement uh, if you in, go from FP2, uh, FP1 to FP2 or from FP2 to FP3, or if you upgrade to uh, Node 12 in the future, right? Let me show you the workspace improvement here live. Um, sorry. Uh, therefore, I need to switch to my virtual machine and log in. So what you right now see is my um, is my um, notes client. It, it's a notes 11 client. I already told you that. So it's notes 11, um, it's 11 um, 01 FP2. And just want to show you a couple of things here. I'm using a roaming solution. So I can do some stuff here. So first of all, I create a workspace page for Flat. Flat. I would ask you right now what your um, what your favorite color is, but I guess it's yellow or it's red. But I already had red, so um, let me say it's yellow if if that is okay for you. Yeah, that's okay. Yellow is good because yellow is. Oh, anyway, it's too yellow <laughs> because yellow is the color of of Domino, right? And um, let me let me quickly on Flat's page. I quickly put my my, my virtual uh, my my address book on, and just that you understand, this is no fake. Let me also create a new um, a new contact here. So I just create something for flood. Uh, hope that's okay. Flat, now you have an entry here, and I also will create in my notebook NSF a new a new document for flood. Okay, so what we now have is um, we do have um, the, um, so Flat, I just realized that your name will be spelled with two A's instead of one. Sorry for that. Better. <laughs> um, so what we now see here is uh, just normal notes client. And um, I wanna show you two starts of nodes using roaming, right? First one, the just normal start with all the improvements in place. Um, and then one start with the workspace improvement, which will give you a bit more performance. And as we all know, the client start is an indicator of how good the performance of the whole notes client will be the whole day. So just let me open a database here. We try to keep it in, your, in our minds that um, the context database is opened. I close my notes client. And um, what I want to show you first is in my local app data, I do have my data folder, right? So let me quickly remove my data folder and empty recycle bin. And then I just want to show you um, and with a stopwatch how long it takes to start the notes client um, and get our roaming, uh, our our remo uh, our data folder back, and this is kind of a normal start. Um, so um, I, I first start the notes client, and then I uh, start um, start start the watch here. So I type in my password, click here, click here, and then we just wait until um, the notes client is started. And you know, it can take some time. It can easily take twenty seconds to start notes. We all know that, 
And um, this is one of the things can also use, um, use a lot of more time. So in my case, I'm using a virtual um, machine. So we wait here. So it's like 21 seconds, 22 seconds, about that, right? Uh, but the good thing is everything is back, right? We're using roaming. So we are not using a single data folder, but we are using roaming. That's perfect. But it took a longer time to, to get our stuff here. So again, we, we have our, con our, our, uh, our information in our databases available. So everything is here, but um, we still need to, uh, now I open two databases, let's say it this way. Now we need to bring the workspace folder in place. And I want to show you the differences between the exact same notes client is starting on the same hardware just by having the workspace folder improvement in place. So, I shut down the notes client again. I open my local app data. And again, I'm removing my data folder. So remove that. Yes, should be removed. And now I use my, um, my prepared workspace folder. So this is my workspace folder, which is prepared perfectly for my, for my needs for this installation. And I push this workspace folder directly into my shared data. And now you see there's a folder name um, with the name common. And everything which is in common will be copied over to the newly created data folder after notes is being started or during the start process. So the reason is, or, or what, I, what we can now do is, we start the notes client again. It's asking for the password. And as soon as I type in the password, let me quickly switch back the time. As soon as I type in the password, you would see this client is much faster than 21 seconds. Let me quickly check. Yeah, that's okay. So log in. So now again on the exact same machine, we start the notes client and we are here in five seconds. Except, and just because of the workspace improvement, right? Um, I really have to say um, it's not needed that notes clients perform slow in virtual inf infrastructures. It's really the case that you can have very, very, very fast, quick notes clients with good reactions and with, and this is an important part, with um, less footprint because we don't need the data folder any longer. It's enough to have a roaming set. And let me quickly, as a final step here, show you my data folder. So um, my, my data folder here is a pretty, pretty small one, right? Um, it's about 100 megabytes. But now let me show you my roaming set, which contains everything in my notes configuration. This is my roaming set here. This is my roaming set. And let me quickly show you. It has about 600, 630 um, kilobytes. And this contains everything, including my names, means my personal contacts, the workspace, um, the bookmarks, my personal settings, all that stuff is saved in a, in a roaming set less than a megabyte. So you, I, I think you got it. So it's, it's pretty easy now to, um, um, to use nodes in virtual infrastructures. It just can be fast, stable, and also with a very low footprint. Okay, that was my demo. Um, so we can switch back to the slides. Two last things for, um, for uh, notes installations on, um, on virtual infrastructures, means on Citrix and or VDI is Windows Registry. If you ever want to change, um, think about you want to have a roaming solution in the future. And um, currently your data folder is on a network drive or a network share. That means um, you need to change something in the registry. Um, at least you need to remove, let's say this way, you, you, can, you can change it or you can remove the whole entry here. So it means um, this one here can be just removed and then it will be created again based on the current configuration. And then you are switching your data folder from, uh, from, the, uh, from the network drive to local. You need to have the correct installation in place, of course, but I just want to say, don't forget about 
um, the user registry settings because this um, path here will understand or will um, open the notes I and I uh, now on the H drive, which is not valid any longer for me, right? Because I used my notes client on my local app data. So this is um, one thing you have to consider. And the last thing is um, what we, um, um, what I would suggest is this is the, um, the data execution prevention of Windows, which is typically enabled. So you just need to put in some exclusions and you can see those, those exclusions here. So it's at least the notes executable, the NL notes executable, the NSD executable, and the other line. Should be just put, um, should add it to the exclusion list of data execution prevention. And then you have a good, reliable, fast, and um, yeah, stable um, installation of nodes on virtual infrastructures. And with this, I'm ready with my slides. Um, again, um, as um, this is valid for also my other sessions, um, we do have the Pan Agenda booth or, or Pan Agenda Cafe opened um, directly after this session for the next 60 minutes. So if you have any additional questions, if you uh, want to talk to us, means to Dominic and myself, um, if you have, you know, if you just want to, whatever, drop a question, talk to us, um, maybe, maybe we can show you some additional stuff. Just join by um, making a photo of this QR code or um, using this link here. Okay, then um, before we start with the questions and answers um, with Flat, let me quickly say something. I know I'm talking often very fast. It's just because I love the product. I like you know, everything with Notes and Domino. And I just want to um, thank the translators not only the Russian Notes user group team, but also very intense to the translators. You are doing an awesome job. Heads off. Thank you very much for your work. And um, yeah, and I, I know it's not easy to work with a person like me who is speaking so quick or fast. And now I'm quiet and listen to Flat. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you for your session. And uh, yeah. Uh, good, you didn't drink uh, some uh, energetic drink because <laughs> you switched to squirrel mode <laughs> and you <laughs> then talk really, really fast. Uh, yeah, we have some questions. Do you have an idea how to speed up a basic client? Can you share some uh, tips and tricks? So this is also valid. A couple of those things are also valid for basic client. At least um, ODS and TCP IP and all template cleanup is also valid for, for the basic client. So if you ask me, a basic notes client should never take more time to start than three seconds. That's a challenge, I think, yeah. Yeah, but, but we can reach it. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's easy at the end of the day. So if you use a local data folder, not on the network drive, but locally, and you have, you, you ensure ODS is the current version, TCP, I, uh, TCP IP is um, well configured. And finally, um, you do not have any old templates in your data folder, it should work. Yeah, because uh, some clients uh, just, uh, I noticed that they spend uh, 10, 15 seconds for uh, host resolution. Yeah, yes. so there is no wonder that it's slow. So, uh, yeah, we can just do a small decomposition of disk, of templates, of network, and just try to speed up. Uh, by the way, we had a case recently where uh, we calculated with one customer that doing a faster nodes client uh, for five minutes per day for 1,000 user company in a year saves $1 million dollars. Because we whether pay people to watch the notes client to you know give a feedback to get back or uh, just you know view is being updated or we wait until the client starts or we work efficiently right? We can... Absolutely, and also, this this sounds very interesting, Flat. So I I like to 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 listen to those um, calculations, and um, and in addition to that is also if a user has to wait all day of, for notes, um, they are not, you know, may I say, um, they doesn't like to work with notes then because they, you know, notes is always slow. But I, as I said, and this is my mission, I think for my life is making notes quick and fast 
because it can be fast and it's easy. And if you can save money in the same moment, that's perfect, right? Yeah, and you saved all, uh, showed all, also how much, uh, uh, how big is the directory uh, in the roaming case. So yeah. uh, I think a lot of customers, they use private views. If oh, yes. the database does not allow to store the view, private view in database, the workspace can be two gigabytes something. And you sometimes, you know, you need to buy even a new storage to store this amount of data. You have a high load on network. So everybody is unhappy. Let, let me put it this way. True story, true story. And, and think about what you can save just because of network load and um, storage. Um, if you have, instead of a big data folder, just a, a little roaming set, right? And the last thing I never talked about that is, Think about you start your notes client with a, based on a roaming set and you will always end up every day with brand new databases. You get back your data, of course, and a user will not understand there is any differences, but you work with a brand new desktop, you work with a brand new bookmark database, so you will not see any corrupted or broken databases any longer. So you will also get rid of tickets. So right. there's a lot of good impacts, let's say it this way. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if the, uh, let, let's uh, do one example. If at home uh, I added a new location or a new ID to uh, my data directory, will this ID roam to, let's say, home PC? Um, yes. Um, so yes and no. So it, <laughs> the question is yes and no. <laughs> the answer is yes and no. So it depends on what you want. In general, so per default, I would say yes. Yeah, that's not a big deal. The roaming set can contain automatically the ID file. In We have some cases with customers, they say we don't want to have the ID file. We want to download the ID file all the time when the user is starting notes from the ID vault to understand it's always the up-to-date ID file. But yes, it is included um, until you say, we don't want to include it, then you have two clicks and then it's excluded. Okay, and as far as I know, you have also set, uh, to set up a roaming, you even have a predefined action. So all you need to do is just enable, right? It's, it's less than five minutes of enabling. Yes, absolutely. So it's really, really easy to, get, to start with roaming. It's in the Marvel client um, configuration database. As you said, we have um, example actions. It's easy. The only thing you have to define is the place where you where the roaming set should should live. That's it. And what what do you think? Of what is the best location? Uh, because right now a lot of people uh, they work remotely. Mm -hmm. They may not have an access to uh, storage. Uh, is there any uh, other options to store the data sets? Good question. Yes, um, you can. You can first of all, you can have it in, um, in. You can also have it in a Domino database, and then if the Domino database is reachable by HTTPS, we can we can use this way. So you can store it, for instance, in your in your uh, mail file. Um, you can store it locally on the disk, um, but it would make more sense to have it centralized and on a file server or um, on a Domino in a Domino database, right? Yeah. But yeah, that's possible. Yeah, I will check for maybe more questions, but uh, I like that everything I ask uh, that uh, uh, you have a answer. Yes, I like it. <laughs> yeah, th thank you very much also for the questions. Um, yeah, it was my last session here today. Um, and um, I need to thank you. I already thanked um, the um, um, the translators, but Flat, you know that if I would have a chance to give you something right now here, I would do that. So let's do a final, um, let's do a final um, uh, high five. Can we do that? Okay, okay, okay. let's do. Okay, try. This is this is really the case in 2020, right? It's play. So all those, I mean, we are adults, but we are playing with the video stuff, <laughs> like. Um, like like kids. So um, thank you very much to the whole Russian Nodes user group team. I think I already said that, but I'm really looking forward to the next meeting on site in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, 
where, where you want to do that, I'm really looking forward to it, to meet, um, to meet good, uh, good people, have good food, and, you know, just a fantastic time. And it was fantastic also here online. And it's Thank not over, right? It was just my last session. Of course, I think, we, yeah. As, as I said on the opening general session, we are just uh, starting our journey. So, uh, yeah, we have great products from partners, uh, from vendor. We have a need for business to do a lot of things more efficiently. And so it's a right set of, uh, you know, stars are in, you know, right position. I like to hear that and I just say yes. <laughs>